at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, coffee. Pine Brothers coffee in a It's Good to Be a Man coffee mug. It's Good to Be a Man by Michael Foster. You want to check it out. It's good to be a man.com. Now, I think the logo is on the other side here. It shows an axe going into wood. Something kind of masculine or what used to be masculine chopping wood. But you want to check out it's good to be a man.com. Perfect. I'm on a good coffee streak. Man, and that feels good. Those two weeks of nasty store brand coffee and mystery coffee. They were pretty rough. Hooping. H-O-O-P-I-N-G. Hooping. Well, good morning, little boy. You come over to get some loving from Daddy? Hmm? Good boy. Abandoned. The movie Abandoned. About four men on a capsized boat. One of the most interesting survival stories ever. 115 days on the open sea. It's about how they continued their lives after they were rescued. You've never seen an angle like that. After drifting to a barrier reef, it's so different than any other survival movie, you probably will like it. Abandoned. Doo-wop music. What a strange little era of music from about 1956 to 1961. I've been listening to it consistently for about 10 years now. It was something that my parents always listen to. They're from that so-called era, the doo-wop era. It was a little bubble of music. It was a little bubble in time. It was music like no other. And then it disappeared. Gone. The era stopped. I don't know why. Does anyone have any insight into that? I will agree with many, it was the truly one of the greatest eras in music history. Nothing could get you out of your chair. Again, think about this now. Doo-wop was a dancing kind of music. My parents go on doo-wop cruises, and they just dance. That's what they do to these doo-wop bands. It's funny. and they're in their 80s. Nothing could get you out of your chair again until Motown became really strong. Think about it. In my going out to bars and listening to bands days, which I haven't done in, in at least a year, but I used to enjoy going to bars and listening to bands. The dance floor would be empty but as soon as anything Motown would come on, the dance floor would fill up. What does that tell you? It makes people want to move. Doo-wop did the same exact thing. As odd as the doo-wop era was, it was something you could dance to. And much of it was slow dance. There's a reason why it has endeared itself in the hearts and minds of so many older people. They did a lot of slow dancing. Who slow dances today? Who does that? Your grandfather, your grandmother, maybe your parents, right? My parents love dancing. If they have a reason to get out and tear it up, they do it. Just give them a reason. It's like life in general. People give people a reason to live and they live. Give people no reason at all, and their life is short, barring disease, of course.
but think about this. Are there many reasons to live out there today? Are there many reasons, are there many, how much stimulus is there for you to get out of your chair and dance with life? In the same way that doo and Motown would motivate you to get up out of your chair and move, what is the dynamic equivalent of that stimulus today in 2020? What can make you get up and move? Is it a TED Talk? Is it a podcast? I don't think there's a dynamic equivalent. There's nothing there. What makes you get up and move? Is it negativity with all of this you-know-what going around? Some of you, I keep saying, have you had enough yet? Apparently we haven't had enough because they keep shoveling it on layer after layer after layer. For those in service industries, July is typically called Raise Your Price Month. Will you lose some customers when you raise your prices? Yeah. I remember a guy, true story. I filled in and I did some part-time haircutting for him. And his haircuts were like $12. He wanted to raise them $1 to $13, literally. And he started announcing it like a couple months. July 1st, Haircuts are going up to $13. Now, this is many years ago, obviously. Try to get a haircut for $13 now. You might be able to. He was announcing to his customers that he was going to raise his prices for a dollar. A dollar. And people would say, well, then I'm going to be looking for a new barber. Some old shitheads actually said that to him. Can you imagine that? And that's... What I'm talking about when I say you are going to lose some customers. That, you don't not raise your prices because you're afraid you're going to lose a couple people. You're building a new clientele. Your expenses went up in the past year. Gas went up in the past year unapologetically. They didn't check your permission to raise gas prices. The electric bill. Gas for cooking. Clothing. Vacations. Tolls on the turnpikes and throughways. Food, they did not check your permission, the prices went up. But all of a sudden in the service industry, you want to raise your price, people get all, ooh, you know what? Raise your price. Raise your price. Compete on service, never on price. If you compete on price, it'll be a race to the bottom. You must feel comfortable asking for what you're worth and creating a profit. That's why you start a business, to create a profit, to better yourself. The only thing keeping you from raising your prices is fear. But keep in mind, when you raise your price, you must raise your service as well. If a customer or client wants to cheat on you, bye-bye, there they go. But they're going to do it maybe once. You know why? Because they're not going to get the service that they get from you. So they will be back. I'm not afraid of people cheating on me. Go ahead, get your hair cut somewhere else. Go for it. You'll be back. I say that in my mind. You'll be back. And if you don't, it's been fun. July is Raise Your Price Month. If underwear and jeans won't stop a fart, then what good will a mask do? My favorite live concert video of this week, I always watch at least one live concert video per week was Chicago and REO Speedwagon. Absolutely incredible. I believe the concert was from 2014. You have to look it up on YouTube. It's really good. But I will say this. You can tell who did more drugs if you watch that video. That's all I'm going to say. Hooping. So your employer says you must get a microchip implanted. What do you do? Do you get it? Do you get the microchip as a term of employment? Yeah, but you signed the terms of employment. You said you would get the chip. You know how like terms of use when you download a app and there's the terms of use like this long, you just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and then you check yes anyways. Your terms of employment might be several pages. One of those bullet points might be that you consent to getting a microchip implanted to make uh, payroll easier or clocking in, or as a productivity measure. So you clicked yes. Now they want to put the microchip 
right here in your hand. Do you get the microchip? Yes or no? Put your answer down below. It's happening right now. I took a poll. I just asked a simple question. Are you anti-vax? 49.4% said yes. 50.6% said no. Right down the middle. Half will do it just like I thought. Politically, the two-party system created two classes of people. I shouldn't say classes. Two groups of people. One's not better than the other, but they created two classes. Vaccinations, right down the middle. Half will take the vax, half won't. What can the government and the powers that be do to make the no, I will never take a vax people to take the vax? You can't travel without it. You can't buy food without it. You can't sell without it. You can't work here without it. So literally, half of those people will end up taking the vax. So 75% will take the vax. Will you take the vax? What will it take? What kind of threats will happen, can be given to you, to make you to take the vaccine? Your child can't go to school unless they take the vaccine. You can't go on vacation. You can't stay at this hotel unless you get the vaccine. Wow. You see where it's going? Quickly, too little piece of interesting marketing news, FedEx envelopes have a 100% open rate versus email that only gets opened about 40% of the time. So what do you think is a better way to reach people? You email marketers. You marketers. What do you think? Let me say it again. FedEx envelopes have a 100% open rate. Email has a 40% open rate. What do you think you're gambling more with if you want to sell something? You answer that yourself. Do you watch Tessa on YouTube? Wait, you don't watch Tessa? Tessa is proof that anybody can have a following. Anybody can have a YouTube channel. I'll put a link for Tessa down below. Now, some of you are going to say, what the H-E double hockey sticks? I watched her and I thought, all right, is there something to this? Probably a lot like what people say when they watch me for the first time. But I watched Tessa. Now I can't stop watching Tessa. Yeah, that's weird. I'll put the link down below. Tessa. Living proof that anybody can have a following. Hooping. A guy walks into a barber and wants a shave. He sits in the chair. The barber says, here, I have this ball. It's a wooden ball. He says, you put that in your mouth, in your cheeks, it stretches out the skin, and I can give you a better shave. The guy says, well, what if I swallow it? The barber says, well, then you just bring it back the next day, like all the other guys do. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. JM Bullion is an online precious metals dealer offering physical gold and silver bullion that is delivered directly to your door. Established in 2011, JM Bullion has shipped over 2 million orders and done over 3 billion in sales. Featuring a wide product selection, market leading and straightforward pricing, top notch customer service, and I can tell you it is top notch. And free shipping on orders of $99 and up, JM Bullion should be your go to precious metals dealer. <laughs> Shrouds, the looks in the moon, eight name. Earl's best